I love hats. I always have, I have a hat head, I have a hat face. If you see me outside for more than five minutes and there is not a hat either on my head, in my hand, or within arm's reach, run away because that is not me, that is some alien who has taken over my body. And you may be next. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hello and welcome to all the new and seasoned viewers here on the June May channel. My name is Paula Jean and I have to give a special shout out to Alex Judge who I know from the comments on some of my other videos recently sent a bunch of you over here and so I'm very grateful to her and thank you for taking her recommendation. Now before we get into the four hats I made recently. What I am wearing is the Fern Top by Pattern Scout in a lightweight linen and I also did a little bit of embroidery embellishment on this. I have a blog post all about that. I'll leave that link down below and you can see some of the close-up pictures. This was actually kind of one of my first forays into a little bit of embroidery and uh, I learned a lot by doing this. So you can read all about that there. So on to the hats. I had mentioned at the end of my last video that I wanted to sew a hat for the Instagram challenge by Sew Over 50 called Sew a Hat 23 that was going on until the end of August. And I did that with the Sorrento bucket hat. This is a free pattern from LB Textiles and this is the second time that I've made this pattern. It was actually the first hat pattern I ever made back in like 2020, I think was when I originally did it. I did make a few changes to it and I I really love how this turned out. This is out of some upholstery fabric that I had. Originally I thought I was going to make this out of brown canvas, but I had this upholstery fabric from some cushions I had made several years ago that I don't even have anymore. Um, and I really liked the reverse of it. Uh, I like the other side too, but I just felt like the this side is sort of bolder, more graphic, and kind of goes with more things. So I used that, and for the lining, or the reverse side, because I did actually end up making this reversible, I used the Cupro Twill, at least I think that's what it is, it was a remnant, so I didn't really know. But uh, this is the same fabric I used to make the shorts portion of the Sunrise Skort that I made back in June. And uh, like I said, I didn't actually mean to make this reversible, uh, but when I was adding this uh, denim band to the lining portion of it, and I was just adding that so that it doesn't show the dirt so much when, when that accumulates from hair products or whatever. Uh, but then I really, really liked it, and I was like, well, maybe I'll go ahead and make this reversible. So I changed the construction a little bit. Um, in the original instructions, you, you can totally make it reversible. But I want, wanted to change the, uh, the width of the brim. So I added to the original pattern piece, I extended it at the outer edge by about 5 eighths of an inch. And then I changed the angle on the sides by extending the outer corners of those out about a quarter of an inch. And that gave me uh, a little bit wider of a brim uh, that stuck at stuck out a little bit straighter, um, not totally straight, but just not down as much. And then I went ahead and as I was constructing the lining, I believe in the original instructions, you kind of sew them together with a 3 8 three eighths inch seam allowance uh, around the brim. Um, and then you turn it inside out and that's how you can make a reversible hat. I just made the lining and stuck it inside and then instead of using that seam allowance, I just took more of that denim, it's the same as I used for the band inside, and made some bias binding and put that around the edge. So I end up with a brim that's about an inch wider than the original piece and I quite love how it turned out. Uh, because of the stiffness of the upholstery fabric and I also interfaced the lining so I can kind of fold this up any which way and you know do some super styling versions of it and because it's a little bit heavier of, of a fabric I feel like this can carry me across several seasons even though it's sort of more of a summer style of a hat. 
I can totally wear this where I live anyway. I can totally wear this in the fall and in the spring as well. So super happy with how that turned out. And that got me kind of looking at some other holes in my hat inventory. Sometime last year, I lost one of my very, very favorite hats. It was this lovely kind of faded raspberry color, boucle, kind of a beret style, but with a wider band. And I wore that thing to death. I had it for probably 18 or 20 years and I was very upset that I lost it. I don't know how it happened, but I've been wanting to kind of try to recreate that in some way. And as I was reorganizing some of my knit scraps, I realized that the leftovers of the rayon rib knit that I originally used to make my roving romper a few months ago uh, has kind of the same color. And I figured a beret pattern would be probably the the best uh, and easiest for me to recreate anyway. And when I was looking online, I realized that they're actually really, really simple. They're not the formed felted wool ones, but because they, because they do have a seam around the widest part of the crown, but they're basically a, a circle and a donut and a band and they're all sewn together and that's basically what makes the beret pattern and so I looked at that and thought I can probably handle this on my own. So I made my own pattern. I drew a horizontal and vertical line intersecting on a piece of medical paper. I took a wool beret and used that to determine roughly what that widest part of the brim should be, the radius of it. And I used my holes in my plastic ruler and basically used that as a compass to draw the first circle. And then to make the donut, for that inner headband part, I used my head circumference, which is about 23 inches. I used the trusty C equals two pi R to solve for the radius that I needed for that circumference. And that gave me about three and five eighths. And because I was gonna be working with a knit fabric, I wanted it to have a little bit of negative ease. So I took that down to three and a half, used my ruler again to make that inner circle. And that gave me an inner circumference of about 22 inches and that's how long I made my band piece. So sewing it together was super simple. You sew the donut to the circle and the band to the donut and voila, you have un beurre comme ça. Originally when I made it, I wanted to make it a wider band to echo the style of the one that I lost. But when I did that on this hat, I was getting kind of junior chef's hat vibes, which is not what I was going for. So I just cut the width of the band in half and that got me what I was after. And like I said, I had been organizing my knit scraps. And after I made this pattern, I had a bit of a eureka moment and I pulled out the remnants of the sparkly knit version of the Masusu edge fold top, which I was a pattern tester for in the spring. And I'd been keeping these scraps and I had no idea what I was gonna do with them because sequined knit fabric, you know, you're, you're just sort of limited in, in what you can <laughs> use them for. Uh, but I had enough to make another version of this beret. And um, the only thing I did differently was I, I kind of cut the piece of the band um, in half and, so that I would have two pieces so that I could line it. And I just lined this with some random leftover knit scraps that I had. And then that gave me this lovely sparkly 70s version that I'm kind of in love with. I feel like this is a great accessory for any kind of like festive holiday outfit. I'm actually going to a friend's 50th birthday party and she's doing a 70s finger food theme. Um, and attire doesn't have to be 70s, but obviously I'm gonna take the opportunity to wear this hat to that party. Uh, so yeah, so those are hats two and three. Um, I'm calling this personal little pattern my raspberry beret. Um, also a nod to my love of prints, rest his soul. Uh, so yeah, 
If anybody wants a dedicated tutorial just on how to make this pattern for your own head measurements and how to sew it together, how I would sew it together if I were gonna make it reversible, uh, let me know down in the comments. If enough people are interested, I'll, I'll film a little video just dedicated to that. Um, and if not, you can just rewind this section of the video and uh, I bet you can probably figure it out on your own. So on to hat number four. All right, y'all. This is the Vista Visor from Sofiona Designs. Uh, I had a bit of a time with this, uh, which I will explain in a second. Uh, but first about the pattern, it's a very well drafted pattern and you get several options with it. You have options of the height of the band. Uh, you can add piping to it. There are three different back closure options, the elastic and then two different widths of ribbons. Uh, it comes in a pretty wide size range. You can also make this uh, in kid sizes. I made the most basic one um, so the the lower band no piping at all uh, the uh, part that I'm really most impressed by is the shape and uh, size of the bill because that's kind of the hardest part to get right I find anyway um, I know I'm really picky about my baseball caps and uh, and this one is actually really really nice now for something so small um, it has a lot of pieces. We have the main band, the band lining, two pieces of interfacing for each of the band pieces. We have an absorbent band, which is some leftovers of some fleece. And then this is going to be the binding for the absorbent band. This is going to house the elastic that goes to the back of the band. And then we have the bill, the other side of the bill. We've got two pieces of fairly stiff interfacing because I don't have the one that is asked for. So I'm hoping two layers of this is gonna be enough. I've got another layer of interfacing for this part. And then this is a piece of vinyl that I'm hoping will work in place of a piece of flexible elastic. So we'll just have to see how all these go together. So where I ran into a bit of an issue was in the construction. And this could totally be a me thing. I prefer line drawings to accompany the written instructions. I just find them much clearer. Uh, this one has photos. And because there are so many different fabrics going on in the photos, and I understand that that was probably in an effort to delineate the pieces because there are so many of them and it gets kind of tight when they're all put together. Um, it just, uh, I got very, very confused. So this is what I've ended up with. I did get it stitched on. This is by far some of the worst stitching I've ever done because this is actually really, really tricky. I did use a zipper foot as they suggested, and I'm so utterly confused in the instructions by the next step that I'm just gonna do my own thing. So I have my absorbent band here that's, that's finished on one end that I thought was supposed to be like the top, like that this was going to be finished here, but in the instructions, it looks like it's upside down. So I'm just going to kind of do my own thing here. And I'm just going to show, sew this like right sides together all the way at the end and then flip it up. That's the best way I can figure out to get a clean finish. And then I will figure out what I'm doing with the elastic bit can't say that I have a lot of confidence in this so far. Now, having done all of that, I kind of had to admit that everything that was visible uh, was actually looking pretty good. So I soldiered on and I got it all put together. And, you know, like I said, even though my stitching is not awesome on the underside here, I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out. I ended up um, using one of my favorite baseball caps and my pressing ham to kind of 
press and form the bill so it was in the shape that I liked. And ideally this would probably be a little bit stiffer, but I took this on my camping trip with my husband last week and I wore this the entire time. It is so comfortable. It is kind of exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I'd been wanting a visor for a long time, but I didn't really like the glaringly sporty ones. I made this out of the brown canvas that I was originally gonna use for my Sorrento bucket hat. And this just blends in with my hair so nicely. I love my little brown zebra lining on the inside. And then um, the, the sweatband worked really, really well. And so, yes, even though I had such a time with it, I am ultimately really, really glad that I made it. And uh, that being said, uh, nobody will be getting one of these for Christmas from me this year. Thank you so much for joining me on this little tour of my recent hat making adventures. I think I am pretty well stocked up in the hat department for the moment. And uh, other news that I just got today, I just found out that I'm going to be on the testing team for a knit top design by an indie pattern designer. I have been kind of stalking her Instagram because she's been teasing her, her pattern making process for this top and I've loved it so much and I'm, I'm just really, really excited to be on the testing team for this one. So I'm gonna be doing that in the coming weeks. And in the meantime, I hope you are having a beautiful September. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.